So one of our producers, uh, George, he's in the Greek islands right now, specifically Lesbos, infiltrating NGOs who work with the migrants to try and bring them into Europe. And we're expecting a call from him any minute now to give us an update on the situation. So uh, keep you posted. George, you there? Yes, can you, can you hear me? Yeah, I haven't heard from you in days. What's going on? <laughs> I've got, I've got to be really, really quick. I've managed to sneak away for five minutes. I've been meeting the NGOs, meeting the all these organizations. I've got so much stuff, so much criminal stuff, and I can't say much, because hang on, I will, I will bring these cards to you, the stuff that I've got. It's going to blow the whole thing wide open. Okay, so how did it go? Incredible. You're going you're gonna to love this. So, Advocates Abroad. Yep. Really, really serious NGO operating in the Greek islands. 17 countries in total, but primarily based in the Greek what islands. What do they do? They do legal aid, representation, coaching for refugees before they have their asylum interview. So With the Greek government? Yep. So yeah. once, you, once they get to Moria, they have their interview. That's where they decide, are they going to go to Athens? Are they going to go to Europe? Are they sent back? 380 staff. Uh, they've had about 15,000 people go through more at the moment. So it's not just a couple no, of no, sob no, like stories. This, 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 is, is. This, is, this is industrialized legal aid, essentially. It's huge. So their support, they, they take support and, and volunteers from like University of Cambridge, University of Oxford, uh, University of Denver. It's massive. They're linked with the International Bar Association. Al Jazeera, Huffington Post have all written about them, done interviews. So these, so are, the guys that, yeah, these are the guys really that people connected, go eh? to. Um, for their information. So the last six days I've been with Ariel, who is their CEO, their executive director, and she's literally told me everything. All the stuff that they shouldn't be doing. All the stuff that, worse stuff than we thought that they might be doing. What does that mean? So I've got all these recordings, because obviously I recorded everything of so course. that we can use it. <laughs> um, they're cheating the system massively massively cheating the system to get these people in. Just listen to this. Sometimes it's like as simple as this, and then how to tell their story, like how to frame it, how yeah. to um, literally explain it, and how to just like keep their private emotions and their private trauma private, because all of this acting is a shield. Like how to coach people on like oh, yeah. physicality. Yeah, I see it like, um, I tell them that this is um, acting. All of this is acting. They're all acting as though this is theater. So for them to get through, they must act their part in the theater. And that is the refugee and trauma because these Yazo officers are so fucking stupid that all they know is what is written on a paper. Yazo says this is refugee and trauma. They have these characteristics. So we coach people how to have these characteristics. So they're they're admitting that they're teaching them to act. Yeah. She, she literally keeps talking about these refugees as actors, as a theatre production. So the government have created a process to try and find real refugees amongst tons of people yep. that are trying to illegally migrate to Europe, and they're making it into a theatre class so everyone gets in. Yeah, it, essentially... Even if they're not a genuine it, Essentially, they've worked out what the interviewers are looking for, and they're teaching people how to do that, how to be that. That is incredible. Um, let me find you this other one, actually. So, like, um, there's a formula we came up with, which is ironic because I suck at formulas, but it's, like, significant events, date, and location. So, the way you can answer all the questions in the same way. Uh, in December 2017, in Izmir, Turkey, I was threatened for being a Christian because my boss and his friends dropped me when I was leaving my church. This is the Bible they tried to tear up. This is the crucifix I was wearing that they tried to tear. And it made me feel unsafe as a Christian in Turkey. But boom. And that way you have the uh, event, the date, and the location. So you give them a very specific answer and you kept it to be a tight, short answer as well. Rather than rambling about so like, much more like <laughs> Exactly right, yeah. And it's much harder to repeat because um, Exactly. Because you have, you have all the elements in there. Like our narrative timeline format, like has uh, like a fill in the blank section at this point, and then we have like two examples: for the home country being a like, significant date for that location, and then ditto for Turkey, and then ditto for another country. So consistency is the most important thing. Even if you find yourself in a position where you have to lie because you still don't even remember something else, that's just stay with what you have said. 
So they, they've got experts that have made a list of refugees will act like this. They'll have these things that they'll say. They know what actual yep. persecution happens under these governments. And these legal advocates are teaching people the words to say. Oh. Yeah. She's, she's, she's been very explicit with me. Uh, they have literally lists of words. So if, you, if you're vague, if you're uncertain, any of that stuff, those are, those are buzzwords that if the interviewer writes those down, you don't get your asylum. But on the other hand, there are certain words that if, if the interviewer writes down, certain characteristics, literally emotion, uh, if you're emotional, then they will wave you through. And they put in the decision whether or not you would act with emotion. So you have to be like, <sighs> or crying or stopping or throwing up or asking for a break. So it's, um, it's becoming an actor. We have to tell people to ask oh, yeah. to take break. Oh, we, we do. We, we actually do role playing. And so like we prepare for the folder. So like the first role playing activity we do is like us and being um, them. And they're the officer. And then we poke around after they've had some practice to see how should I walk into the office, how should I introduce myself, how should I give them a folder, and then how do I sit down, and then when do I stand up, when do I show them how to pray. Why would you need to show them how to pray? Because, well, because it's, it's a good way to show um, honesty. I've done in other places too, like um, not good places, to see if you're truly what you say you are. You can't show how you oh, pray. Oh, you're actually Christian. Oh, so if you're saying you're like playing persecution, but you should probably know how to be, you know, friend that way. This is, they also ask like, what's your favorite holiday? So like, some people just say like Christmas, um, but like we explain you can't just say this because this is not sufficient answer. You have to say, um, and you have to say it in a certain way, just like December 25th, which is Christmas, which is the first day of our Lord and Savior. What this organization are doing, they're not just teaching refugees how to make it through the system. While I'm sure there are genuine refugees that are trying to get to Europe and go through these requests with the government, this group Advocates Abroad, they're looking for a 100% success rate. They are trying to get every single migrant that comes across those borders, illegally or legally, criminal or not, they are trying to get them through to Europe under refugee status. There is there is a process in place to determine who is and who is not a genuine refugee. And the government, they have made checks and balances for that. They have made sure they can determine who that is. And this group, they are trying to skirt that process. They are trying to make a mockery of Europe's borders and get every single person through. One of the craziest things in that recording is the fact that they are teaching people who could very well be many who are likely Muslim, who are perfectly safe in many Middle Eastern countries, how to pretend to be Christian, how to pray, how to say that Christmas is their favorite holiday. I mean, that is insane. There are Christians who are being beheaded, that are facing jail, that are facing just complete and utter persecution that are now being put at the back of a line for support in Europe because advocates abroad are teaching people perjury, how to lie to the government and pretend to be Christian so they can get through. It is making an absolute mockery of Europe's borders. It is making a mockery of the proper system put in place to help genuine refugees. And it is hurting both genuine migrants and the European people who now have to deal with a mass influx of people that are entirely unvetted. We spoke to the migrants on the camps in the Greek islands and they were telling us one of the biggest things they fear are ISIS in their camps and criminals in their camps that have just gotten through and come to Europe. And there is a very good chance that advocates abroad are coaching those people as well, are coaching criminals, are coaching ISIS, how to skirt the system, how to get by and lie to the government and get into Europe. Of course there are people, of course there are people who need legal help. Of course there are genuine refugees out there, but what they need is non-partisan, real legal help, not a like actual activists that are trying to do illegal behavior, not advocates abroad. So that was just a very small snippet of some of the amazing content we have with our project 
borderless. There is still so much we have yet to expose and so much more we want to expose that the government and the media are trying to cover up. Unfortunately, so far, we have come to the end of our budget for the borderless film, but we're looking to you to help us continue this project as there is so much more we want to investigate and bring forward. If you want to help, please check out the links below or go to borderless.movie to do that. And a huge thanks to everyone who has already supported making this possible. We'll see you guys in the next expose. So the leader was like properly involved with smugglers? Of course they were. I mean, we all are to some degree. Like, there's no question.